Hello, my name is Hassan Ahmed and I am a technical marketing engineer for the SD-WAN product. In this video, we will discuss about Dual Endpoint Tracker for Direct Internet Access DIA, which was introduced in 17.7 20.7 SD-WAN release. In the previous video, we noticed the importance of using Direct Internet Access to route various critical business application traffic and SaaS traffic over the internet. Using DIA still remains and would remain one of the most widely used cases of SD-WAN as a solution, which provides high available network services while maintaining the security. As of today, with single endpoint tracker in use, the router's DIA interface tracks a single endpoint and based on its status, the result of the tracker gets decided whether to remain up or go down. It could be possible that the endpoint which gets tracked is actually down but that doesn't necessarily indicate that the whole path to reach the internet is really down. Yet, the router has to rely and change the status of the tracker depending on the results of this single endpoint. Due to this false negative, the tracker will go down which eventually results in not utilizing that DIA circuit to route the internet traffic anymore, even though the path to reach the internet could be healthy. In order to overcome this, dual endpoint tracker feature has been introduced which tracks not one, but two endpoints under individual tracker, which is then mapped to a tracker group. By adding an additional tracker, this ensures that the router now takes more robust decision of a tracker group to remain up or go down, depending on the results of these two endpoints, which are subjected to either a Boolean AND or a Boolean OR operation, thus reducing chances of false negative to a better extent than what single endpoint tracker can achieve. Let's have a glance on the configuration workflow. In step one and step two, individual endpoint needs to be configured, which is then called under respective trackers. These endpoints can either be an IP address or a DNS name. In step three, the tracker that were created in the above steps are mapped under a tracker group, which eventually is subjected to a Boolean OR or an AND operation. Finally, in step four, the tracker group has to be mapped to a WAN interface prior to which DIA NAT must be already configured on that interface. Let's now visualize how the Boolean AND operation works through this representation. Here we have two probes for the endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 that are called under each tracker T1 and T2 respectively. Tracker group is then subjected to an AND operation for the individual trackers. The router sends two probes from GIG1 interface, each tracking their own respective endpoints. Since we notice reply for the probes received by the router, the tracker status of T1 and T2 remains up. As a result, the tracker group status also remains up. The data traffic hence gets forwarded through the DIA interface, which is Gigabit Ethernet 1. Now due to some disruption in the ISP network, there is no reply received for the blue probes, which is mapped to tracker T1. Due to this, the status of the tracker T1 goes down, resulting in the tracker group to go down as well, because for an AND operation, even if one tracker is down, the tracker group will remain down. The tracker status for T2 remains up, as the router is still receiving the reply for the yellow probes. The data traffic gets routed through the SD-WAN overlay tunnel, through the data center site 100, provided that NAT fallback is configured on BR10CH router. Let's move on to the Boolean OR operation discussion. Again, here we have two probes, blue and yellow, tracking the respective endpoints. Since the router is receiving reply for the probe it sends, the tracker status of T1 and T2 remains up, resulting in the status of tracker group to remain up as well. The data traffic hence gets forwarded through the DIA interface, which is Gigabit Ethernet 1. Once again, there is some disruption in the ISP network due to which tracker T1 goes down as the router doesn't receive replies for the blue probes. The tracker group status still remains up because for a Boolean OR operation, the tracker group will go down only if both the trackers go down. Hence, the data traffic still goes out through the DIA interface Gigabit Ethernet 1 without any disruption. In previous sections where we discussed about Boolean OR and Boolean AND operation, a single DIA circuit was taken as an example which is mapped to a tracker group. Now, 
In a scenario where there are two DIA circuits and both of them have either a single tracker or dual endpoint tracker group configured along with the NAT fallback, this table explains the behavior and the results to be expected under different scenarios. When both tracker groups are up, then the DIA traffic will get load balanced between both the interfaces GIG1 and GIG2. When tracker group 1 status is up, but the tracker group 2 status is down, then DIA traffic will pass through GIG1 interface since DIA is still enabled. Now, when the tracker group 1 status goes down, but the tracker group 2 status is up, then DIA traffic will pass through GIG2 interface which is similar to previous scenario. Finally, if tracker group on both the interfaces go down and if NAT fallback is configured, traffic will get routed through SDMAN overlay tunnel through the site whichever is advertising a default route. Check out the next video for the configuration and demo about this feature. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos on SD-WAN and cloud features.